because of his adulterous affair, is trying to get rid of the fire of God. Beloved, how many times do we in our own walk with God because the word of God, the fire of God brings conviction to us, we would rather get rid of the word of God. There is a famine in the world for the true word. How few there are who preach the gospel undiluted by human tradition. It is crucial that we share a gospel that has not been watered down, whose strength has not been diminished by human traditions. Revelation 21 and verse 5, the Bible says, And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. I want to pause for a second and encourage you with the idea that God's words are faithful. Amen. If you catch that, amen. If you understand and agree that the words of God, that the word of God is faithful. Amen. 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 I want you to notice again, Titus one verse nine, the Bible says, holding fast the faithful word as he has been taught that he may be able to buy sound doctrine, both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. We are seeing in these two verses that the word of God is faithful, faithful. I like depending upon things that are faithful because they will never let you down. But I want you to notice something else about the word of God. Jeremiah 20 verse nine, the Bible says here, then I said, I will not make mention of him nor speak any more in his name, but, his word was in my heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones and I was weary with forbearing and I could not stay. The Bible lets us know that God's word is not only faithful, but it is also like a fire in the bones. God's word is a fire. Amen, amen. This is why one of my favorite verses in the Bible, Jeremiah 23, 29, it says, is not my word like as a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces. Listen to me. God's word is like a fire. God's word is faithful. God's word is trustworthy. And we are to preach that word undiluted. Notice again with me, Hebrews chapter four, verse 12, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and the joints and, and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. This is everything the word of God does and is. It is faithful. It is like a fire and the word of God <clears throat> penetrates our consciences. The word of God is a discerner of thoughts. It is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Amen, amen. Notice again with me, Proverbs 27, verse six. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are, de are deceitful. Let me suggest to you that the, the word of God is our friend, our faithful friend, who, yes, even though wounds us at times, is wounding us for our own good. Let me jump back for a second. You see, <clears throat> when, when the Bible speaks of the word being like a fire, I want you to understand, or a light, this word here, light, in John 3, 19, is the Greek word phos, and it means fire. So this is the condemnation that light or fire is coming to the world and men love darkness rather than light or fire because their deeds were evil. Understand that fire is a source of light. So the word of God is our faithful friend who has come into the world, not to condemn, but to save. 
But I want you to understand our response to the word of God, if we are living in darkness, is that we hate the light. We hate the fire. We don't like the fire. We don't like the word. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. Beloved, I want you to understand the word is like a faithful friend. The word is like a fire that sheds light on us, revealing our inner thoughts. If we love darkness and do darkness, we end up hating the light. We end up hating the fire. It brings conviction upon us, not to condemn, but to save us. Follow this carefully. We're going to go to the book of 2 Samuel chapter 11, beginning with verse 1. The Bible says here, it came to pass after the year was expired, at the time when kings go forth to battle, that David sent Joab and his servants with him and all Israel. And they destroyed the children of Ammon and besieged Rabbah, but David tarried still at Jerusalem. And it came to pass in an evening tide that David arose from off his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house. And from the roof, he saw a woman washing herself. And the woman was very beautiful to look upon. And David sent and inquired after the woman and said, Is not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? And David sent messengers and took her and came in unto her and lay with her for she was purified from her uncleanness and she returned unto her house. So David ends up sleeping with this man's wife. And the woman conceived and sent and told David and said, I'm with child. And David sent to Joab saying, send me Uriah the Hittite. So Uriah is one of David's soldiers. And David said to Uriah, go down, go down to thy house and wash thy feet. And Uriah departed out of the king's house and there followed him a mess of meat from the king. But Uriah, watch this, Uriah slept at the door of the king's house with all the servants of his Lord and went not down to his own house. Now, Uriah comes home from the battlefield because David summons him. You get the idea, right? David knows that Bathsheba is pregnant. So he wants Uriah to go and be with his wife so that he can cover his sin. Yeah, this is Uriah's child. I brought Uriah home and Uriah went. To, but Uriah does not do that. Why did not thou go down to thine house? Watch this answer, guys. And Uriah said unto David, the ark and Israel and Judah abide in tents and my Lord Joab and the servants of my Lord are encamped in the open fields. Shall I go into my house to eat and to drink and to lie with my wife? As thou livest and as thy soul liveth, I will not do this thing. How can I go be with my wife when the army is in battle like David, listen, man, I am your faithful friend. I am your faithful friend. David, my, my focus is on your mission, is on God's mission. Uriah is a faithful friend to David. And when David had called him, he did eat and drink before him and made him drunk. And at evening he went out to lie in his bed with the servants of his Lord, but went not down to his house again. Even in Uriah's drunken state, he's like, I'm not going to go enjoy myself while my brothers are out on the battlefield. That's a faithful soldier, man. That's a faithful friend. David is trying to ease his conscience. And every time he sees Uriah, his conscience is convicting him. And when he finally realizes that Uriah will not be unfaithful to him, 
Notice what he does. Set ye Uriah in the front of the hottest battle and retire ye from him that he may be smitten and die. You see, there's something here I want you to understand. David had to get rid of Uriah because of his affair with Bathsheba. So now he's going to, whatever he needs to do to clear his conscience, he's going to do that. Are you ready for this? The name Uriah, it means fire of God. <laughs> Uriah or Uriah, fire of of God. David, because of his adulterous affair, is trying to get rid of the fire of God. Beloved, how many times do we in our own walk with God, because the word of God, the fire of God brings conviction to us, we would rather get rid of the word of God. Let me say it this way. It is easier to get rid of my enemy than it is to deal with the inner me.